Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Lepakshi Khurana. Here are the top stories you're tracking for you on Tuesday, the 7th of June. Indian states bear brunt of scorching temperatures, heat-related ailments on the rise. German Foreign Minister says won't recognize Taliban as dire Afghan conditions persist. And crisis at Sri Lanka needs $5 billion in next six months, help from China for essentials. And now for all the details, people in parts of India continue to bear the brunt of scorching temperatures on Tuesday, while hospitals are witnessing a spike in patients with heat-related health problems. The Indian Meteorological Department has forecast the heat wave conditions will continue over northwest, central and eastern India during the next three days. Scorching temperatures after a brief spell of rain are once again giving a tough time to residents across parts of India as they struggle to carry out their daily activities. The weather office on Tuesday predicted the heat wave conditions were likely to continue over northwest, central and east India during the next three days, while a yellow alert has been issued for capital New Delhi. The maximum temperature in the city was recorded at 44 degrees Celsius by afternoon while people chose to stay indoors. Hospitals in the most populous Uttar Pradesh state reported they are witnessing a spike in patients, especially children, with heat-related health issues. Summers in India are generally accompanied by a host of diseases including diarrhea, gastroenteritis and dehydration. Temperature jo hai 40 se leke 44 ja raha hai. और इसका असर तो पड़ता ही है काफी बच्चे और बड़े बुखार डायरिया डिसेंट्री के साथ आ रहे हैं एडमिट हो रहे हैं ठीक होके जा रहे हैं मीनवाइल प्लूम्स ऑफ स्मोक कंटिन्यू टू राइज इन द फॉरेस्ट एरिया एंड पूंच नॉर्दर्न जम्मू एंड कश्मीर टेरिटरी एंड एट दिल्लीस बल्स फॉर लैंडफिल साइट वेयर एक्सट्रीम हीट लेड टू फायर इंसिडेंट्स इन रीसेंट डेज द फायर इन बोथ द एरियाज हैव बीन ब्रॉट अंडर कंट्रोल ऑफिशियल सेड अर्लियर इन लेट अप्रैल the landfill site had reported massive fires that had continued for three weeks and left nearby residents gasping for air as they complained of breathing problems. And security forces on Tuesday neutralized two Lashkar-e-Taiba terrorists, including one Pakistani, in a gunfight in Kupwara district of India's Demon Kashmir. On Monday, another Pakistani terrorist was gunned down in Baramula district. This comes as Kashmir Valley has witnessed a spate in targeted killings of civilians by terrorists in recent days. Two terrorists, including one Pakistani terrorist affiliated with L.E.T. lashkar e taiba outfit, were killed in an encounter with security forces in Kupwara district of India's Jammu and Kashmir on Tuesday. The gunfight broke out early in the morning in Kupwara's Chaktaras Kandi area. The Pakistani terrorist had code name to fail, the police said. This came a day after another Pakistani terrorist belonging to L.E.T. was gunned down in Baramula district. While two other terrorists managed to escape. Kupara police or army will operation launch Kyata, Ajishme do terrorist Maraga Laskar Tavaka, a Pakistan terrorist, a Tralka. The Kashmir Valley has seen a spate in violence with more than a dozen targeted killings of mainly non Muslims and migrant workers by terrorists in the past two months. Security forces have claimed more than 80 terrorists have also been neutralized in anti terror operations this year. And news from Pakistan, Pakistan's finance minister Miftah Ismail said on Tuesday the price of petroleum products would increase further in the country days after fuel prices were increased by 17% and around 20% before that. Speaking at pre-budget seminar, Ismail lashed out at the previous Imran Khan-led government for messing up the economic policies of the country. A day earlier, Miftah said the government did not have any plans to impose financial emergency or freezing the foreign currency accounts quashing rumours about it on social media. The rumours have also impacted markets on Monday. 
Prime Minister Shehbaz Sharif would soon be announcing austerity measures to reduce government expenditure, he said. Meanwhile, as Pakistan and the IMF, International Monetary Fund, have yet to reach an agreement on the fiscal framework. Ismail said that he was very confident about the deal. Islamabad is making last-ditch efforts to convince IMF to move ahead with manageable fiscal adjustments of 1.5 to 2 percent of gross domestic product in the coming budget. Well, moving on, raging forest fires in parts of Pakistan-administered Kashmir have become a cause of worry among the locals as they are severely affecting the ecology of the region. Residents have lamented the Pakistani authorities have taken no action so far to stop the fire and protect the wildlife. Residents in Pakistan-administered Kashmir have raised concern over raging forest fires and lamented inactions by authorities to check such incidents which are affecting the biodiversity of the illegally occupied region. They blamed that some forest department officials are also involved in illegal felling of trees while the fire is destroying the natural environment and they are selling the trees in the Pakistani markets. Locals have requested the Pakistani authorities to take strict action against forest arsonists and deploy guards to protect the wildlife. Magma Jangalad ka bhi koi aadmi nazar nahi aaya, na hi saag ko bajane ki koshi ki gayi hai. Maine Muzaffarabad se safar shuru kiya, sakriban ye 50 kilometer safar hai. Is safar ke dooran maine teen jagah pe aag jangalad mein mukhtalif makamat par lagi hui dekhi hai. Locals have now become increasingly intolerant of Pakistani occupation as Islamabad maintains a negligent attitude and ignores even their basic demands. And German Foreign Minister Annalena Baerbock, during her maiden visit to Pakistan on Tuesday, called for the international community to send Afghanistan's Taliban leadership the message that it is heading in the wrong direction while the country looms under a humanitarian and economic crisis. She said Germany will not recognize the Taliban as the legitimate rulers of Afghanistan as long as dire conditions under the Islamist persist. Germany's Foreign Minister Annalena Baerbock on Tuesday urged for a united international call on the Taliban for change and said that Germany will not recognize the Taliban as the legitimate rulers as long as dire conditions under the Islamists persist in Afghanistan. The minister made the remarks after holding bilateral talks with her Pakistani counterpart Bilawal Bhutto Zardari in Islamabad. No foreign government has formally recognized the Taliban since they took over Afghanistan last August. She warned of a looming humanitarian and economic crisis in a country in which she said girls were deprived of education, women were excluded from public life and dissenting voices were suppressed. Pakistan's new foreign minister Bilawal said the Taliban should heed international community concerns on rights and security. We see in my point of view, that the Taliban are heading towards the wrong direction and therefore it is also crucial that economic supports need to be conditionalized with regard to the basic rights of the people. This comes as the United Nations World Food Programme and the Food and Agriculture Organization in a report on Tuesday issued an early warning alert for an urgent humanitarian action in Afghanistan and 20 other hotspots, where hunger is expected to worsen from June to September 2022. And moving on to news from Sri Lanka, Sri Lankan Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe in a special statement to Parliament on Tuesday said the country will need 5 billion US dollars over the next six months to ensure basic living standards and is renegotiating the terms of a UN-denominated swap worth 1.5 billion dollars with China so as to fund essential imports. Sri Lanka will need 5 billion US dollars over the next six months to ensure basic living standards and the next three weeks will be a difficult time to obtain fuel and gas, Prime Minister Ranil Vikrame Singhe told Parliament on Tuesday. The island nation's worst economic crisis in seven decades led to a shortage of foreign exchange that stalled imports of essential items such as fuel, medicine and fertilizer, provoking devaluation, street protest and a change of government.
To tide over the turmoil, Sri Lanka will need about 3.3 billion US dollars for fuel imports, 900 million for food, 250 million for cooking gas, and 600 million more for fertilizer this year, the Prime Minister said. The central bank has estimated the economy will contract by 3.5% in 2022, Vikramasinghe said, but added that he was confident growth could return with a strong reform package, debt restructuring and international support. The Indian Ocean nation of 22 million is negotiating a loan package worth about 3 billion US dollars from the International Monetary Fund in addition to help from countries such as India, China and Japan. On Tuesday, the cabinet approved a 55 million credit line from India's Exim Bank to fund 150,000 tons of urea imports, a critical requirement as supplies have run out during the current cropping season. Sri Lanka was also renegotiating with China the terms of a yuan denominated swap worth 1.5 billion US dollars agreed last year. The international terms provided that the swap could only be used if Sri Lanka maintained reserves equivalent to three months of imports. But with reserves now well below that level, Sri Lanka has to request China to reconsider the requirement and allow the swap to proceed, Vikramasinghe said. Vikramasinghe, who is also finance minister, will unveil an interim budget next month that he said aims to slash government expenses and looks to increase annual welfare spending to $500 million from about $350 million. Well, after a gap of two years due to the COVID-19 pandemic, the five-day annual festival Ambubachi Mela at the centuries-old historic Kamakya Temple in India's northeastern Assam state is set to return from 22nd of June. The annual Ambubachi Mela celebrated in the famous Kamakya Temple in India's northeastern Assam state will be held this year from 22nd June after being suspended for the last two years due to the COVID-19 pandemic. The Mela or fair was not celebrated at Kamakya Temple in Guwahati city in a festive manner and devotees were not allowed in the temple premises in the last two years due to the COVID-19 situation in the state. The head priest of the Kamakya temple, Kabindra Prasad Sarma, said the Ambubachi Mela, the biggest congregation of devotees in the northeast, will be observed this year in a festive manner. 22 ka Ambubachi Mela, Bait Jun Rat Atbasker, Pandharmir Me, Prabhiti Hogi, Ushi Samaika, Samaise, Maka Dwar Bandho Jayengi, Tushilaba Amluk, 23, 24, 25, Tindin Maka. द्वार बन रहेंगी पूजा भोग कोई भी नहीं हो पाएंगे 26 को दर्शनार्थी के लिए द्वार खुला जाएंगे टेंपल अथॉरिटीज हैव सेड दे विल फॉलो कोविड-19 प्रोटोकॉल्स टू ऑब्जर्व द फेस्टिवल दिस ईयर कंसीडर टू बी द मोस्ट ऑस्पिशियस ओकेजन अंबुबाची फेस्टिवल सेलिब्रेट्स द स्ट्रेंथ ऑफ फीमेल्स एंड द पावर ऑफ प्रोक्रिएशन well, that's the way it was in South Asia this evening. Before we conclude, the top stories once again. Indian states bear brunt of scorching temperatures, heat-related ailments on the rise. German foreign minister says won't recognize Taliban as dire Afghan conditions persist. And crisis at Sri Lanka needs $5 billion in next six months help from China for essentials. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.